Hey, Eric, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, long time we had the no show for a long time. So uh, as you see, there is a little bit of changes on my side. Uh, I decided uh, to change a little bit of location in my room. I see you changed your location as well. Now you are in Greenfields, all right? Well, for now, I, I, yeah, Jordan will put a background in behind me. So uh, what the viewers see when this is live, I, I don't know. It's up to, it's up to our producer. <laughs> Maybe I'll be on the beach somewhere. <laughs> the, 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 you know, like you can wish for a lot of things, but you don't know what's <laughs> going to be in your background. So Probably a bookshelf. <laughs> bookshelf seems to be the go-to. <laughs> or maybe a studio or something like that. So Could be as well. So... Yeah, uh, a lot of things uh, I think has happened uh, since our last episode, right? Yeah. yeah so uh, we are now recording uh, not during the working day, so I feel a little bit more relaxed because usually uh, for me it's very late night and uh, for you it's uh, somewhere around lunch between your calls uh, during the working day. Yeah, now it's early morning for me. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about the early mornings? Not a, not a fan. Not a fan. <laughs> 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 no, it's all right. I, I mean, I'm usually up at seven. I, I, I'll go run and then come back. So it, uh, this is my off day. So it's okay. No, it's cool. It's different, but we'll get used to it. It'll be a good show. Yeah, uh, I hope uh, so as well. So And our viewers will uh, like it as well. Um, we are changing and we are evolving, right? So <laughs> maybe we should start and invite some guests as well and uh, talk with the merchants uh, from the perspective of the merchant, you know, how they feel about performance uh, from perceived uh, sales and so on. So it would be interesting to speak about it as well. Yeah, that's a that might be a whole other show. <laughs> We've had people ask to come on and be interested. Even uh, people who do like front end performance and optimizations have asked about that. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe the viewers will let us know if that's something they're interested in. Yeah, definitely, viewers, let us know in the comments below this video, so we will know uh, what to do with uh, the show format because. Yeah, we like to review customer websites, but I think it's it's became more and more like one almost the same like the other because almost all of them have issues with Magento Core performance and we have to take a look at it all the time. You know, uh, something that we are doing at Mage Mojo is we're um, we're doing what's we don't have a name for it yet, but it's kind of like uh, an optimization score or a efficiency score is what we're calling it internally. So we collect the amount of sessions that a customer gets, and then we c we can track all the CPU down to the down to the second that they use across all their services. So what we're doing is we're creating this efficiency score, and we're saying, okay, some of you know here's the here's the median, and then here's standard deviations out, and then from that we're actually uh, collecting the extensions that are installed. So we're now looking to see like, okay, is there a common pattern between extensions and underperforming and inefficient stores? So we're probably going to put an article about that and uh, I'll have some more information about that uh, on the next, on the next uh, episode. So. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the funny thing today, I just received an email from Mage Mojo uh, automated system telling me that uh, my uh, test note on which I was doing some load testing doesn't have all the caches enabled. Yeah, it, well, uh, it's actually in production. So it, it's considered to be in production and we do monitor that. So we're like, okay, you're in production, you need to have caches on, get your sessions out of files, uh, basic things like maybe your crons are overrunning or your database queries are locking. And uh, But is it like a new feature that you released? Because I never seen this kind of email before. We change the way we interpret whether caches are on or off. So that's probably what it is. I, I think in some instances we weren't able to detect it. Uh, and now we've, we've overhauled it. So we've have a more accurate detection rate. It's yeah, it's actually, it wasn't as simple as what we thought it was. It never is. There's always some weird edge case that we can't detect, but I think we're getting them all now. That's probably why you got that. Yeah. Um, because, uh, 
I was a little bit surprised. Yeah, def definitely because uh, I, on that instance, I was using it for testing the cache uh, flash uh, functionality, and I intentionally disabled over there a full page cache. And probably for disabled full page cache, it uh, gives me notifications that uh, I'm in violation of terms of service uh, because <laughs> I don't have all the caches enabled. That, that, that kind of makes sense, but yeah <laughs> it's it's it was a new message and uh, was interesting to see it we said we send a lot of automated messages out like if we detect queries being locked that happens a lot we'll we'll try to kill queries or even restart mysql when it locks up a, a lot of that happens and customers just don't even know it like that it's it's happening and they're not seeing it unless an end customer reports it otherwise the host will never know that it's happening unless they're monitoring it like we are um, so we have a lot of protections like that to keep stores healthy and alert store owners of what's what's going on at the and, system level. And do you also plan to introduce something like, uh, uh, for instance, uh, if the store is connected to New Relic, right, you can track very slow transactions. I see that a lot. Like there's a lot of times uh, some customers have like 30 seconds plus page time generations on some pages. Uh, we. Do you no, no, because we don't we don't want to integrate with third party services like that. We don't want to it, it, like if you have New Relic and that's happening, that's cool. You should have New Relic. That's great, but that's up to you to set an alert out of New Relic for it. But I mean, like in PHP FPM, you probably can parse uh, the log access log of PHP FPM queries and uh, create uh, some kind of alert for a lot of uh, queries that take let's say let's say the page generation times that take let's say longer than 10 seconds we will so so we'll send you we'll be like okay these queries were taking over x time and we've we've killed them and now it's okay or if we, if, if we if we can't kill them if the database is locked we'll restart it and then we actually we send you the queries so we'll include in the email the actual queries that we're running do we correlate that back to php fm no uh -uh. now if you open up a support ticket and you want us to dig more into it yeah we, we are very much an extension of your devops and we will go take the time and dig in uh, the time code from when it happened and pull the FPM logs, which you can pull yourself as well. You can, those are accessible uh, even through the UI. Uh, you can get those and then you can look at that certain time and see what pages it was. Usually though, if you're capable enough to do that, you're capable enough to look at the query and you can see the columns and the tables that are in use. And it's a pretty strong correlation of, of what part of the store is doing it. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes crazy uh, how some people try to query from a gentle, let's say, WordPress database, and they're doing it in a very terrible way. But 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 in, but in general, uh, like it would be a very interesting feature for you just to create similar notifications for slow FPM queries because not a lot of people know that let's say uh, a generation of the category page takes a long time. For them, and if if let's say you could somehow to integrate uh, uh, with the information that you probably um... we can, but the problem is the problem is everybody has those like everybody does like ninety nine percent of customers have pages that take a long time. So what what would happen if we did that was we would have to put in a custom parameter to say like okay how 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 long is too long and what page does that apply to and then it starts to get really granular where like we couldn't to tune it so that it wasn't so noisy would be really really difficult maybe if you were going into a, a system where you were tracking it and then you were looking for like standard deviations um which is what a lot of people call fancy machine learning and AI and you're just saying like okay it's been like this for the last 15 minutes but the, this for up to now, it's been this, and for the last 15 minutes, it's now 2x what it was, and you alert on that. You got to get more, you got to get more uh, looking for outliers, I guess, because just alerting on specific things is too. Because uh, for one of the hosters here in the Netherlands, uh, I was uh, using uh, for one of the customers they service for a long time, and they showed me actually, I think it's in Mage Report, yeah, it's Mage uh, Report. And when you, let's say, t take a look at your uh, stuff, yeah, can I sign in with white? Probably. 
Uh, okay. Uh, Jordan, don't uh, <laughs> record this page. Now, now you can uh, take a look at it. So here you can, for instance, see um, average PHP response time, and then you see the average response time around uh, all of the uh, pages. Yeah, but that's all the pages. Like again, you can get that out of New Relic, like uh, alerting on a yeah, specific page. Yeah, about uh, uh, average uh, hypernode. This is this specific customer. So average hypernode is medium across all of your customers, and here is something that oh, this oh, the average, yeah. So that's what we're talking about doing with the efficiency score as well, is to show you like, okay, here's here's the average, here's what's efficient uh, for other customers and your version. Uh, I I don't think we'll do really granular versions, although that's another issue because like there's 2.3 where MSI just threw performance off a cliff. Uh, so it, it's yeah, like who who are you who are you average to on Byte? Like, are you going against M1 stores? Are you like M2 versus M1, or is it segmented M1 and M2s? And then is it also segmented uh, in, 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 in this uh, specific customer? It's M1, so it's uh, averaged against M1. And are you only M1 stores? So it's you're, you're sure average is all M1 stores that they're showing. Maybe, maybe the because uh, I'm sure that for Magento too, it would be much more higher <laughs> average well, value. Well, <laughs> they don't just host Magento; they're hosting other stuff too. So, you know, are you going against WordPress? Are you going against the static site? Like, who who is in there creating that average? Is one of the questions that we have around uh, releasing something like that. Yeah, I think it was the best way just to have a major uh, version. So if you have Magento 2, major version Magento 1, Magento 2, uh, or uh, any other one. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start with uh, our current customer and let's record an intro probably. Yeah, so Load in the Loop, sponsored by Blackfire.io. I'm Eric Heilman, CEO and co-founder of Mage Mojo Magento Hosting out of New York City. Purpose of this program is to take some of what we've learned in the last 10 years of Magento-specific hosting and evaluate one of our customer stores. We'll share with you what we find in hopes that it may help improve your Magento skills and the performance of your own Magento stores. Along with me on this trip is my co-host, Ivan. Hey, my name is Ivan. I'm a Magento consultant out of the Netherlands. Um, I help merchants with performance and proper Magento 2 setup from the beginning of the project. Um, right now, we're going to review one of MageMojo customers. We're still waiting for customers from uh, not only from MageMojo to come on the show, but we have a lot of requests from MageMojo customers to get on the show. So uh, we have them as a priority. And uh, today, uh, we're going to take a look at Liberty Mountain, right? Tell us a little bit about this customer. Yeah, so Liberty Mountain, they were, uh, they're looking to launch a new M2 store and they're having some performance issues with it. It looks like their uh, emergency, we have some example categories here like emergency essentials and uh, uh, camp hike. So it looks like, yeah, categories and then also product pages, the PDPs. So they're a little bit, they want to go live, but they're they're a little bit worried about the performance. So they're hoping that we can spot some offenders in here for some wins so they can go live. Yeah, ju ju just right away for them, remove advanced search because advanced search just doesn't give you any, uh, any benefit. It's better just to use quick search and then just narrow down the search results because advanced search is a performance issue in since Magento 1. So in Magento 1, advanced search was a problem because it was using like queries instead of using uh, the full text search. So that's a little bit complicated functionality okay so in general let's start with our standard profile of the home page right yep. uh, i'm gonna go right away with disabling the aggregation let's see in the meanwhile what do they have on the home page so they have a couple of static blocks uh, they also have um, new products This one, I think we will see quite a lot 
uh, of issues with maybe because I see they have starting ads, so it means that some of them have probably tier prices. Okay, and here is our results for a homepage. Uh, we see that it's 200 database queries, and these 200 database queries are sign of some issues with the database uh, operations over here. And let's see what's going on there. Mm. Uh. Okay, so this is Magento Commerce. Uh, they are using Magento Commerce and uh, this is something I think that I know as a common bug in Magento Commerce with uh, category events uh, because they don't load events per category. Uh, they don't load events for the list of categories, but they load it one by one. And the same applies for uh, category permissions as well. So you see that those two observers add a lot of time. And probably if we take a look at the queries itself, what is this one? It's something new in Blackfire. This looks very weird. Seems like a bug in UI because you see dot 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 is not replaced with a dot. Yeah. <laughs> so a little bit weird, but okay. Uh, here permissions definitely. For product, 100% uh, there is uh, 22 database queries for, for each product that is visible on the category page or product page or any other page. Uh, there is a common problem with uh, Magento Commerce where uh, they execute a database query per each product. So the standard load in a loop, uh, that adds quite a lot of uh, additional uh, load in the database. Um, what do we see here as well? A bunch of standard stuff, but I think the biggest one is catalog permissions. Uh, and also this query is a little bit slow because it's using EAV data to retrieve Yeah, it's it's hard to grasp what's going on here. Okay, so it takes some text data. So this is to retrieve some worker and product and something else. Okay, so this is a standard union query to retrieve uh, the data for uh, all the products uh, in a collection. Okay, so this is probably more or less okay, but because of the staging functionality of the catalog, this is actually very important to uh, check with this customer because uh, if this customer is really using Magento catalog staging or not, uh, it's usually a little bit of performance overhead on your front end because Magento has to build a lot of uh, weird queries with joining some additional tables. And sometimes MySQL optimizer is unable to properly uh, perform those queries uh, in the best way because there is too much stuff gets joined because the staging is built in such a way uh, that it just modifies other queries on the fly. So it's not every single query that is using catalog staging uh, is well crafted. It means just that it's automatically applied to every single uh, operation when, let's say, you want to update or schedule some changes um, for catalog. Catalog staging will add some additional queries in order to select multiple uh, 
the, the proper values for specific uh, version itself. So it would be great for this customer to evaluate, do they actually need catalog staging? Because you can still use Magento Commerce without uh, catalog staging, so you can disable it. Uh, and I have a couple of customers who are successfully running with catalog staging disabled and they have much more better performance uh, on the front end and they have uh, less issues with uh, uh, deadlocks in the admin panel as well. <clears throat> so uh, this is kind of one of the performance hooks uh, for Magento. However, it requires uh, changing your database structure because uh, catalog staging changes in one way. It changes uh, the database structure. It adds additional columns to product uh, table and uh, entity tables of the product itself. Uh, there, there are some uh, scripts available from the community where you can actually uh, downgrade your database to before staging. So you can uh, safely revert uh, the changes, but you need to make sure that uh, the staging module uh, that was using uh, those tables is getting disabled as well. Otherwise, it will reapply the changes on the next uh, uh, setup upgrade. Okay, uh, here... Yeah, 20 milliseconds is quite heavy query and I think mostly it's because of uh, added staging table. So as you see here, uh, we have a catalog category entity created in, updated in. So this staging functionality really slows this query down. Uh, I I don't think that you will find it uh, in the standard Magento uh, stores that it will take this amount of milliseconds to just retrieve category uh, I think even just category main entry. So this is usually a very fast query in MySQL, but in this case, it looks like because of uh, this created in, uh, there is some additional issues because this updated in and created in, they're not part of uh, the pass index. And I think there is definitely some table sort happening because I don't think that they have a lot of categories, right? So do you have any idea how many categories actually they have? No, I don't know. But even let's say if they had 10,000 categories, uh, like running a query like that wouldn't take uh, this amount of milliseconds. So it's already a sign that, yeah, staging definitely hits them hard on performance of the queries itself. Okay, so what do we have here as well? Mm. Looks like quite a few categories. Yeah, so m mostly I see here, for instance, they don't have any load in the loops in custom code, but they have load in the loop in Magento Commerce. So here you see is that add collection data. This observer takes a lot because there is uh, the category permissions and uh, category events uh, modules that are adding a lot of uh, overhead. However, let's just take a look at some of the categories. Maybe they even don't use category permissions. Uh, like category permissions, when you can restrict for specific customer groups, you can restrict an access to a category or to a product, right? And I don't think that the uh, majority of the merchants use this feature, but when you get a Magento Commerce license, all the features are enabled by default. So that's why it's very important when you start a Magento 2 project that you decide which features actually you're going to use. Otherwise, they will actually just slow you down like if, if you're using category permissions it's fine you know like you're taking uh, that uh, additional functionality as a cost you know like for your performance but if you don't use it you are just wasting your cpu cycles on the server right you better just disable it 
and uh, here I, I don't see any sign of category uh, catalog events here so usually like you will see a banner or something uh, like that where you have uh, you know flash sale like uh, this offer expires in uh, this amount of time and you have a countdown with the time so this is a catalog event and catalog permissions is usually when you have per customer group right some some products are not shown or some categories are not shown but yeah it's better of course to check with the customer itself but it makes sense to take a look maybe if they can just safely uh, disable those modules through Composer because those are just adding additional time uh, and then the generation time will reduce dramatically. And that's uh, all here. the catalog staging mod module that you're talking about? And catalog staging as well, yeah. Okay, so here is uh, our good old friend Semasti. Uh, pay restriction extension. Uh, this actually related, I even don't know why it's happening here, because yeah, the same thing again, uh, you remember the Composer version retrieval of Magento, uh, this is kind of a performance issue in in this PayPal before is method available for Oh, payment before is method available and master pay restriction. So they added uh, a plugin and this plugin on every call to that method uh, invokes this product method to get, get version. Probably, I don't know for what uh, they're using this version over there. It, it just doesn't make any sense because the functionality doesn't depend on Magento version uh, of the extension. Uh, if you have uh, specific question restrictions for a version of the product, you have to mitigate it through the composer dependencies, not through uh, runtime checks, because uh, the product metadata get version has no relation to the set of the modules enabled and to the set of functionalities available to your Magento uh, store. It, it just information about the general build or package that Magento releases for marketing, not for system uh, dependencies. We see that one a lot. Yeah, so this is kind of standard ones that we see on our uh, show, right? <laughs> and here some kind of... Yeah, catalog events. Uh, apply product permissions and collection after load observer. So this one takes some time and this one as well so I think if they would use catalog events and they would use catalog permissions we would see much more longer database query times than something that we see here uh, for one simple reason because when it's empty MySQL just returns you back uh, it knows the table is empty and if you take the data let's say from the table uh, where is it? Uh, catalog uh, permissions, let's say. Yeah, let's look for it. Oh, yeah, it's... So here, if MySQL uh, sees, for instance, that this table is empty, it might just return you back uh, quite quickly uh, with no results. However, there is like 22 queries. So this is uh, a total time of the query execution for this 22 queries. So it's quite fast for 22 queries to execute it within 5.8 milliseconds, right? So it means that each query took a, uh, not a lot of time, but here on afterload, uh, those queries get executed. So as soon as they have data in those tables, the performance will get worse. So if you use uh, catalog permissions, uh, usually you need to optimize a lot of places where those queries are happening because this is quite complex uh, logic. And sometimes I just advise customer to use something more simplistic and based on the actual business rules they have than relying uh, on the extension that is provided uh, from Magento Commerce uh, that adds a lot of data into the database and might multiply and 
uh, worsen the performance of your uh, database queries. So that's the catalog permissions. Is there is there community scripts you can use to optimize that, or something you have to do custom, or can you just disable yeah, so, it if you're not using uh, it? You you can disable it. So if you are not using it, just disable it. Is there okay. anything extra required with database tables, like for the um, for the staging? Uh, I I think no, because like it's very uh, independent module. You, ju you just uh, do composer uh, replace. There is some uh, methods the community are using when they're not going to use some of the Magento core modules. You just can create in your project uh, composer JSON. You can create in a section replace. You can specify the composer package name for that module uh, with an empty uh, with with a star and it will automatically assume that this module already exists in your project and it doesn't need to install it from Magento repository. So it's in such a way you actually uh, tell, hey, I already have this module, I don't need it to get installed. So this is kind of a hacky way to <laughs> disable a module, but it works through Composer, so everyone using it. And usually you should do it from the start of the project, so yeah does that mean they would have to rebuild this to do that uh for catalog permissions and catalog events no because this is okay. uh those modules are quite uh yeah they don't have side effects for other functionalities if you disable them but uh, catalog uh, uh staging is so Let's say uh, you can use staging for other entities, let's say like CMS pages and other stuff. But uh, for catalog, usually customers don't use it because people use ERPs and PIMs in order to supply the product information. They don't uh, change the product prices or uh, product descriptions uh, based on the schedules of the internal Magento functionality. So this is something more for customers that doesn't use any integrations with PIMs or ERPs. And I, I don't know if this customer is using staging or it just was a standard install of Magento Commerce. Yeah, I'm not sure either. Likely a standard install. Yeah, so if it's a standard install, uh, it makes sense to invest some time with the developers because I think uh, there is already uh, a script available by the community. I, I think the guys from IntegerNet, uh, they created uh, an SQL file in which uh, there is a downgrade to community edition from enterprise edition of Magento 2. Oh boy. <laughs> so so, so you, 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 you can, and you can use the script to partially uh, disable some of the tables. So you can just take, uh, uh, you, you, for instance, can check which tables are used in staging for catalog. And you can take uh, the queries that modify those tables from that script and just apply them. You, you don't need to downgrade <laughs> to, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. to community. Uh, there's still a lot of good functionalities in Magento Commerce that you want to use. I'm just telling yes. that that some of them you want to disable because some of them doesn't make sense to use if you don't use them uh, or doesn't make sense to leave them enabled if you don't use them because they introduce performance penalties. Yeah, that makes good sense. Yeah, actually my general uh, rule uh, with the customers, I always disable staging. So... Uh, and we usually uh, discuss on case by case basis if customer really need to use that functionality or maybe is, there is something simple and easier for them to be used let's say for catalog because on catalog staging is just a nightmare for performance okay so here in the profile and we are just still on the home page right <laughs> yeah we are wow <laughs> yeah so here we have uh, a musty page speed optimizer. I think we've already discussed ab about this extension that it's using Minifier. And this Minifier is introducing a lot of CPU time 
Now do the page rendering. So it makes sense to uh, actually remove this extension completely and use uh, Baylor. Baylor, probably it's. Yeah. Uh, I think this is the right one. GitHub Magento. Yeah, is this the one Andrew did? Yeah. Yeah, so this is the one. Uh, I'm gonna right away uh, put it in to our chat so you can put it into the show notes. Yeah, we've seen really good results from that and we do support yeah. that. Yeah, so Baylor is the way to go for uh, front-end optimization. Do not use this uh, page speed optimizers uh, extensions because uh, they are not applied during the deployment process. They're applied during the runtime mm -hmm. and they slow down the other parts of the page. Like you might think like, yeah, it, it improves my front-end performance, but it makes your back-end performance much more worse. Yeah. And in case if you are using, uh, let's say, horizontal scaling, um, those extensions are usually writing to the file systems that are network-mounted uh, shares. Yes. And this is very slow. And then all the benefits of horizontal scaling are neglected by this uh, small uh extensions that uh, doing write operations on every single page. yeah it's one of the reasons why we've invested so much into the file system how we handle it um we have includes excludes in our auto scaling and put a ton of optimizations into the network part of it because it's it just there's so much on the network file system we've done as much as we can but you definitely need to keep as much off of it as the customer can or they're going to have a bad time yeah, it's it's sometimes uh, quite crazy uh, how extensions write to the file system <laughs> uh, on a recall. So let's take a look at the problematic category page, right? So they were yeah. uh, complaining about emergency essentials. And I think I already know why, because uh, we see a lot of filters and I'm already guessing what kind of suggestion we can give to them. Do you know? Uh, let me wait. Yeah, let me guess. Uh, use <laughs> smile elasticity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, it just, I think, a common thing to do. I think they're using some kind of a musty extension here because this is, doesn't look like a core functionality because there is a bunch of uh, different uh, type of filters and there is also multi-select ones. So. Yeah, uh, definitely we see here uh, there are 16 seconds to generate this page. Uh, this is uh, too much uh, for sure. So no, let's were, take... How many, wait, how many were they showing on there? Like 140? No, only... Oh, 1 through 40. <laughs> 1 through 40. <laughs> okay, only yes. 40. So a very, very small amount of uh, products yeah, yeah, uh, shown on a page, but number of database queries is quite large. And as far as I understand, those products are simple products. So they're not even configurables. So for page with only simple products, this is too much database queries. Uh, like I could understand like if it would be a page with configurables, like 600 is okay, but still not okay. But sometimes, you know, like you can live with it. Uh, but if we talk about page with simple products, this is a completely uh, bad situation from point of view of the performance. And let's see, uh, can we zoom in into this part to the product list? And let's see what's going on there. So there is a bunch of stuff related to group around get associated products, BSS simple detail product, detail grouped product. Uh, I don't see group product there. Do you? No. Let's um, open. Uh, oh, did it open a new window? Sorry, I need to open any new tab, not a new window. I hope it's still going to be on recording. So let's just open. A 
product. Ah, okay. Okay. So this is a group product. Oh yeah, all right, yeah, the, the different flavors. Um, but why do they go with group products? It's um, interesting. Because you want to buy multiple of them at once, right? Okay, it, it makes sense. It makes sense. So, as I understand, they mostly sell group products then. Uh, Band-Aids, I don't, like what's... But those are group products? Uh, this one actually, I don't see even buy button. Yeah. I can add it to the shopping cart or what? Maybe it's a broken product because yeah, it's still uh, not the production environment, right? Yeah, yeah, it's preview. Yeah, it, it, it could be that some stuff. Okay, so two items available is probably two types of the products, right? Okay, so you have uh, let's say this product being sold and then you have two uh, sub products over there. Yeah, but that wasn't even like, that wasn't even the same product or a different quantity. That was like a, it was like a, a knee wrap. I thought like, was... yeah. So uh, that's why, yeah, I, I can understand why they put it like that because for instance, you want to buy a cliff bar, right? And you don't want to list every single flavor of the cliff bar separately, right? But at the same time, yeah. you want to allow a person just decide, hey, I want this, 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 and this flower without going back to the same page, you know? Mm -hmm. So you just want them to uh, let, uh, to add it to the shopping cart. So it should be quite easy uh, to understand why they're using it. But there is definitely some performance issues with that um, because uh, this uh, BSS simple product. So uh, it's probably for every single group product, it does a query to take the quantity of products available. So here we see, oh, should it? It did um, move it to a new window. That's weird. Okay, so here you see when you have a group product, it tells us two items available, right? And here it tells us also two items available. And most probably uh, the price is also is taken from uh, the list of the group product. Uh, items so instead of let's say using uh, a price index it just uh, it rates through a list of uh, simple products that's also a bit of performance issue and this, the individual products are listed there as well so if you go to any of the individuals you see all of them but then there was also yeah and here we also have uh, some kind of inventory modules that is also doing something weird. Uh, Why am I? Well, yeah, as Liberty would be them. Why am I? Is a uh, that's definitely a vendor. So I wonder if they customize that extension. Could be, but uh, yeah, there is some kind of performance issues over there unfortunately without seeing the code i cannot tell for sure you know like what the problem was there but uh, this part of the page takes quite a lot of time to render uh, however comparing to the rest of the page load time like 16 seconds this is minuscule right the yeah, product is uh, 20, rendering 25 percent quarter yeah but there is other parts of the pages right of the page itself 
and yeah, the menu definitely this is the same as on uh, uh, other pages. However, probably after that we will see some filters rendering, and here's probably where uh, a lot of issues are happening. So yeah, alert filters. Uh, and here we have a lot of calls to Elasticsearch. Yeah, so this is 21 uh, call to Elasticsearch. It is quite a lot. So, and also those are not very well optimized Elasticsearch queries because like document search, uh, this is a little bit weird from point of view of... Uh, it, it was Amnesty, wasn't it? Amnesty yeah, was calling it's, this. It's, yeah, so definitely uh, we recommend to uh, switch to Elasticsuite from Shopify. Uh, this is uh, the standard recommendation. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, yeah, what's up with the filter? Yeah, so as you see, the filter time, unfortunately, I don't see what's happening inside, By but by the time it takes to render this template, I think there is a lot of issues with um, shop by extension with performance over here because like 940 milliseconds, it's a lot to render a single filter, right? Why do you think we see so many people using Amnesty Shop by when Elastic Suite is out there? Um, well, mostly just because they have very good marketing to sell uh, this stuff on Marketplace. Also, Massey is uh, uh, a very known Magento. Uh, in, uh, how is it called right now? The extension providers, what kind of partnerships they have? Oh, but, I don't, technology? Are they a technology provider? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but it, in, in general, like, they're the top tier uh, partner, right? So I think they're Platinum or something like that. Or how, how is well, it they're called? they're certainly right? selling a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, they're very well known uh, across developers because, yeah, they provide uh, quite good functionality. Uh, the problem is that that functionality doesn't scale with the size of your database because, like, on a small website, it, it could be okay. But as soon as you have uh, reasonable data, um, mm. these extensions, That's, they're not working really very well. Good. That's yeah, a really so, good point. So like for small merchants who might have, let's say, 500 products, right? A musty alert navigation show by whatever might work well. Like, And this is probably uh, with which data sets extension developers are usually testing their products. They're never take, let's say, a database of um, 200,000 products and see how their extension performs on this database, right? Because I'll be real curious to run this efficiency score and take the list of modules and see, cross-reference the common ones and see what vendors are common and what extensions are common and see if this bubbles up. I'd be really curious to see if Shopify bubbles up on the inefficient stores. Yeah, because uh, for instance, uh, here I see they have um, like uh, fourteen hundred, right? So fourteen hundred products on this specific category, and those are group products mostly. So the actual catalog, like we're not talking about all the other products. So I think they have at least three hundred thousand products in total, right? SKUs in the database. Is it the right estimate or? I don't know, actually, but that seems reasonable looking at the categories and the products. Yeah, so if we talk, take a look at the actual visible products and if we click on a product, we see that there is at least uh, two or three variations usually. And sometimes there is 21 or more, you know, like this kind of stuff uh, tells uh, us... Uh, a lot about uh, the database size so they have a big database size and for them shop by is just uh, not gonna make it because uh, shop by was not developed for these data sets this is speculation yeah. that it was not developed for these data sets maybe 
they did. They just didn't uh, care about performance, but I think they just didn't see that there is a performance issue because they were developing based on small data sets. And also, to be honest, uh, Magento also develops probably on small data sets. I don't think that developers um, on daily basis just install large databases and uh, develop based on those large databases. Usually, uh, development happens like someone creates few test categories and few test products, and they just go on and develop functionality that they need. No one uh, uses the real production like database uh, during the development phase. There, there are the load test profiles you can generate. There's what a small, medium, and large. Yeah, but the problem with that one, uh, right, is that uh, it also very synthetic, uh, like. You cannot develop based on it because this is like product one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't have real pictures. It doesn't have anything, you know, that would really show you, uh, you know, issues with functionalities. Because usually, uh, for developing, let's say, alert navigation, you want to create various filters. You want to fulfill uh, specific uh, attributes yourself because you want to, you know, like test specific features you want to develop. You're never going to work with synthetic data for that matter. Yeah, it takes a long time to generate that large profile too, like a really long time. And uh, I, I can see why developers wouldn't, wouldn't want to wait for that. Yeah, so uh, there is nothing wrong, you know, like with using simple one, but at least... Uh, if you have customers with large databases, take notice and uh, optimize your code afterwards. Even if you release an extension that performs slow, uh, try to take some feedback and uh, uh, improve it on the next iteration. Because I've, I think like all those uh, 25 or how many uh, elastic, 21 elastic suit, uh, elastic search, sorry, elastic suit is another <laughs> extension. So all those elastic search and HTTP requests can be really very well uh, reduced in, in the amount of them just by maybe doing one request to elastic search to get all those filters in one go instead of, you know, doing it for every single filter. Because I think this is the biggest problem here with the filters itself. And another thing I think as well, uh, that um, this extension, maybe also Elasticsuite as well has the same problem. Like if you have uh, some attributes where you have a lot of options, like this one, like- Yeah, that is big. <laughs> So here we, for instance, see a product group and product group in this case is related to this category. So we are right now seeing only values for this category. And for the whole catalog, there may be thousands of options. You know, we don't know for sure, but probably there is thousands of options. And they're probably also multi-select on the product level. Uh, and usually uh, developers don't even take a look at the uh, performance of looking up the options because they just use standard Magento uh, source model that is very inefficient uh, because let's say if you want to output a label let's say for product group ID 1 or 2 um, what uh, Magento does in a core uh, is very interesting so if you have a thousand of options uh, for each of the options uh, that you try to retrieve a label uh, Magento will iterate through every single option and check, is this ID of this option? If so, then we will return a label. And basically, when you have, let's say, 50, uh, 50 uh, items to show here, right? So let's say there, there is 50 of them. Uh, for it, it means that Magento will iterate a thousand of options 50 times. So it means like there is going to be at least uh, 50,000 uh, of different uh, comparison uh, to the current option. Instead of using a hash map where it would be just a single O1 operation just by looking up the option text by option ID, 
Instead of that, Magento iterates through every single option uh, object. And that's a little bit of performance issue. And I, I mean, think... Is there is there a way for this merchant to make shop by work? Because they, I mean, it looks like they put a lot of time and effort into it, and the functionality is great. Like as a shopper, I would I love all of those uh, filters and to show me how many products are in each one. It's really cool. But do they have to really rebuild a lot to go to Elastic Suite? I, I think it has uh, the same functionalities. So like you can show, um, you can have multiple filters, you can choose uh, multiple ones. Like it makes sense just to try it out, create a staging branch or whatever, like install that extension. Uh, yeah, it will require you to configure those filters because probably there is some configuration done, but in general, like the data is the same for which uh, on which those filters are based. So I think mostly just about um, uh, the it, it, it just about uh, the time spent on configuring the extension and maybe changing a little bit the front end. But uh, if they are not live yet, maybe it makes sense to take a look at it. Yeah, because I'm gonna do it. Do it now. Yeah, it, it, it's better to do it now than go live and uh, you know run into issues with uh, you know slow categories and customers complaining that they cannot do anything uh, on a website so here here yeah. we have uh, another issue with page speed but here it's very small comparing to uh, the the alert navigation itself so right so if we take a look here like the alert navigation takes a huge amount of time like at least one third of the page of the page time of the 16 seconds spent on uh, alert navigations and products, and we also have an issue with uh, standard things like menu. But menu we already discussed on the home page. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the product page itself, right? Uh, so let's start with a simple product page. Uh, weird I can't add it to the cart maybe they have some kind of permissions uh, maybe you have to be uh, registered maybe in, or it's intentional because it's preview it's not like it's kind of staging uh, could be but I think I was able to add let's say a group product to the shopping to the shopping cart right hmm but uh, I'm not you could add quantities sure. you could change quantities but could you actually add it i, I don't remember seeing a oh m maybe yeah, there's maybe there's no add to car button so here we are uh the product page itself Yeah, so it takes some time. Ninety nine bottles of honey vodka on the wall. Ninety nine bottles of honey vodka. Yeah, I think there is something happening, right? Okay, so this is quite a lot for a product page. 10 seconds. This is, I think, too much. And majority of the time is actually spent on MySQL. So like 547 milliseconds. This is a lot for MySQL queries. So we will uh, take a look at... product page? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of queries are there? It's interesting. Okay. Uh, so mm. shop by brand yep. is, is taking two seconds to render on a product page. So right away, like whatever you are doing, shop by brand, it's probably just a way to click on a 3M category, <laughs> like on, on a 3M uh, button and go into... Uh, 
a page yeah. with all 3M products, right? Yeah. So this is uh, basically um, everything that you 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 need to do, but uh, probably an extension has much more functionality in it, probably. Uh, but even for that functionality, like it shouldn't take this amount of time to render the brand logo and have a link to go uh, to that page, you know, like from that uh, location. Yeah, that's what. What is it doing? It's. I mean, what is actually in that two seconds? A database waiting for database queries or I/O. Some kind of get attribute options, so they take all. Oh, okay. So here is what's happening. Uh, I, I don't see a code, but I already see some uh, methods that give me an idea that they probably use uh, attribute options of Magento in order to represent brands. And those attribute options uh, then loaded completely. So like probably all the brands you have in a store gets loaded and created as an object. And then probably it iterates through all those options in order to find the right brand. Uh, and then it has this get brand aliases that takes another second. And then it uh, converts options to something else. So, yeah, I think it's just uh, some code that even shouldn't be there. Like getting brand URL shouldn't take one second, right? Uh, you can pretty much know in which uh, location your brand page is going to be. Uh, you you. You don't need to spend one second to generate a URL. It's just too much time. Uh, here, get attribute uh, option settings data also should not take that much time. So this uh, extension shop by brand is a huge performance bottleneck on this page, definitely. So makes sense maybe just to replace it with custom functionality uh, by developers because yeah, it just takes a lot of uh, precious uh, CPU time. Uh, okay, uh, convert to objects. Yeah, so brand alias is, this is definitely, takes the most of the time of the product view rendering, as you see here. And there is at least 195 uh, milliseconds spent on IO, so it means probably database or something like that. And here we have another extension uh, that in this case uh, takes own version number uh, from configuration. We know it's a bad practice. Uh, we already discussed it on uh, multiple shows before. Uh, so it's uh, something that uh, Okay, so it's this Wyomint Core Helper Data const Constructor uh, and it tries to access own version number. And this one introduces at least 784 milliseconds on the page with a lot of I.O. time because it reads all the XML files of all the modules in the file system. So this is very inefficient. Uh, if you need to access your own uh, module version, just create a constant. Don't read it from XML file because especially don't read it through XML file by reading all the other module versions as well <laughs> because it, it doesn't make any sense. Like if you have some logic depending on your uh, module version, please create a constant and update this constant with every single release. Do not uh, do not just uh, put it in XML file and think like, yeah, you still modify this version, right? When you release a new extension version. So just use a constant. Don't, don't use it in uh, module XML version because first of all, that version that you are using in module XML also affects uh, the database setup scripts. And since 2.3, uh, the Magento module version is completely optional. So you don't need to use it uh, in order to be able to uh, create a setup upgrade. And if you modify uh, setup version with every single module up update, it's a bad idea. So just 
don't do it. Uh, use a constant. This is another part, and this is actually all what we see here. Like if we take a look from the 3.4 seconds of product view PHTML, so the rendering of the product itself, it takes two seconds to render uh, this brand and another second to render uh, whatever it is uh, related to Wyoming uh, extension. I don't know what kind of extension because it doesn't show me everything. It just show me that there is some kind of uh, helper. helper being called. So this is uh, a lot of time saved on page uh, rendering. Um, Okay, so what we have here as well is we here have uh, also uh, something else, but I don't see what it is. Uh, unfortunately, there is something related to the catalog, but I can see. Oh, it's probably. Mm, oh, wait, wait a second. This is bad. This query looks terrible. Uh, it's brand attribute. Uh, okay, so something again from the brand, and let's see from the call stack. Call stack. Oh, what's happening over there? Um, mm -hmm -hmm. Okay, shop by brand, product more from this brand. Oh yeah, this is this is a classic musty. Um, so what they are doing here, uh, they try to show more products from the same brand, right? And these more products from the same brand, uh, they want just to show different products each time, right? So what they do, uh, they're using a very magic uh, order by in MySQL called order by rent. And if you consider that they take all the products of 3M brand. This is probably a couple of uh, thousands. They load them all up and then randomize them. Yeah, so now from, from my MySQL perspective, like you are in MySQL, you get a query. Hey, I, I want to uh, get uh, all the products of this brand and then I want to uh, order them in random position and then just return me the first 20. Like... <laughs> If you want to create a list of recommendations, just create an index. Like if, if you have uh, some kind of logic, like uh, you want to show uh, all the product from those brands, uh, just uh, create an index uh, in which you, you specify already a position and let's say refresh it every every hour or something like that with a new random position. But don't use order by rent. Order by rent is the worst uh, order in my SQL because it results always in table sort and your queries are gonna perform very bad. So that's why we see here this 506 milliseconds uh, because of this um, shop by brand extension that outputs those products in random order uh, by loading all the brand attributes. So let's just go again uh, here. So yeah, here by the time here we see this order by rent, you see? This mm -hmm. one takes 125 milliseconds. So this is huge, 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 huge for MySQL. Another one is MSI. So no surprise. Uh, hmm. MSI uh, takes 41 milliseconds, uh, applies the most recent MSI patches, and if it still doesn't help, uh, you know, they can also contact me. So. I have uh, some MSI solution for them. Uh, here we have uh, CMS blocks, like 20 queries to CMS block. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see on a page. I don't see 20 CMS blocks here. So this is, looks weird. Maybe it's somewhere in the general page structure. Uh, maybe on other pages it also happens. But yeah, here it looks... Um, uh, a little bit strange that there is so many CMS block queries. Uh, 
yeah, the super link and uh, this kind of queries, it's something that's related to page cache. Uh, I'm going to release an extension uh, that's going to fix this problem uh, once and for all by disabling this plugin completely. Uh, yeah. Uh, here, a bunch of MSI queries. So I see the rest of the queries are mostly MSI. Uh, the biggest one uh, from the performance standpoint on this page is this order by rent because uh, yeah. If, if yeah let's put it also this way so imagine you have a uh, thousand of concurrent visitors on your website and each of them opens a product page of the same brand uh, there is a probability in my SQL to create a lock weight timeout be because uh, every single query that's gonna uh, generate a list of uh, brands uh, it's it's gonna do it uh, by uh, uh, by uh, using table sort so let's say you build a huge query to retrieve all the products of this brand uh, you, you get a table sort and if you have uh, not a read committed uh, transaction isolation mode in MySQL uh, MySQL will lock the records related to this brand and if someone going to update uh, the database you're going to get a lot of uh, lock weight timeouts on those queries and taken into consideration that uh, this database query takes 125 milliseconds it means uh, there is a huge probability of a lock weight timeout because query is very heavy So, uh, unfortunately, I think we can't uh, review uh, add into cart. Oh, did it actually record this uh, view? I think not. <laughs> okay, again, uh, sorry to the viewers, but let's just open here as well, uh, just this thing. So here, the queries we were talking about are uh wait it's essentials okay somehow it was opening it in a new window yeah i didn't catch that either so. yeah but in in general like i i think the, the problem is obs records only one window it doesn't record if another window gets opened uh in yeah. firefox but somehow i i clicked uh, somehow on view timeline and it's opened it in a new window but in general I'll, I'll try to catch that next time yeah so here is the issue the issue is with this query uh order by rent on product page um and here is all the stuff that we were talking about like uh, this uh a master shop by brand plugin and here is also uh the Wyoming constructor um, itself. So basically, in an ideal situation, like uh, their uh, time on the product page can be like 2.5 seconds max. It's um, it's even can be optimized even further on if they actually uh, enable composer after loader optimizations. We see here on on the left side. As a common thing, once, like once you do that once, do you always have to do that every time you deploy? Uh, yeah, you have to yeah. do it on every single deploy because uh, Magento regenerates classes, and you need to have to discover them and so on. So usually, you add it into your build pipeline to make sure that when you push new changes, a uh, bunch of operations are automatically applied, so you never forget to do it. Otherwise, you know, like manual steps are always prone to missing some commands to run or something like that. Okay, so I, I think we are uh, kind of done. Because, yeah, so... Be, because unfortunately I can't test add to cart because I, I don't see add to cart button. So they need anywhere. to compose their auto load for sure. But the big thing is to try the MSI performance patches and try removing amnesty more from brand and see if that gets them where they want to be if not they've got to go the full elastic elastic suite route 
Yeah, because um, it, it makes sense to try it out. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't see how they could. I don't see how they could launch this the way it is, uh, unless they get some gains from the yeah. more by brand and the MSI patches. But still, I, but uh, I, I can imagine like with the merchants like like this. Um, uh, this is usually a type of the merchant who updates products quite frequently. So even if they will try to rely, let's say, on varnish cache or something to, you know, deliver a reasonable experience for the end users, it won't work because as soon as they change the price or some product gets out of stock. Uh, I mean, how, how could you even put varnish cache on this page with all the filters? Yeah, like, Showing uh, the number of products uh, the, in each one and... Yeah, but but I I mean like as soon as uh, one of the product on this category page, it, at least one of the product gets out of stock, your cash yeah. is gone. And with a merchant with uh, this number of small products that probably sold gets sold, you know, like quite often, it it means like yeah, it, it's just not gonna make it. it it's just gonna be taking too much. Uh, uh, time just with no cash so it, it, yeah. it makes it 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 is uh, a case of the merchant where you actually need to optimize your dynamic rendering time you can't just uh, rely on cash in, in this case they have too many various products that gets changed all the time and performance here is quite critical f uh, in my opinion to be uh, fixed properly so Cool. Maybe, maybe I'll have some interesting uh, performance stuff to, to show next week with the average times and efficiency scores and uh, versions and then modules. I'm really interested to see if there's any common modules, like common offenders. Yeah, it, 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 it would be uh, great to also create a machine learning algorithm, yeah? just by knowing which extensions are there to classify customer as potential slow web high, high risk <laughs> <laughs> high risk customer <laughs> we're going to charge you more <laughs> <laughs> no but honestly what we, what we would like to do is we would like to reward efficient customers it's like it's the insurance companies here the car insurance companies they, they're doing this thing where they'll send you out this little adapter you plug it into the OBD2 port on your car you drive it for six months and then they say okay you're safer than most of the people out there we're going to give you a discount like i saved i think eight percent on my car insurance by doing that it's kind of the same thing like uh you know for us since we're session-based pricing and everything like if you're really well optimized you know we'd like to give you a discount mm -hmm. and if you're not then well <laughs> we need to talk about an upgrade <laughs> yeah it's 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 also like even like if you uh, charge this customer by a session uh, it's not good for a business where the customer can't buy anything because the web shop is slow so it's very important to not only think from point of view of like if they would pay for a hosting themselves uh, it would cost a lot more than they probably paying right now because uh, this kind of performance uh, won't uh, be supported on uh, regular stores with the same pricing as you have. No, no. If you're buying by the core, you're you're ne you're going to need tons of cores, and not only that, but you're going to exceed. We have a lot of customers who are very inefficient, who would who, who would well far exceed what is even in a single chassis. So now you're talking like a huge cluster, and it's yeah, it's crazy. Especially when you have peak, peak traffic and you're really inefficient, you need a significant yeah. amount more. Yeah, like. Let's take a look like there is 16 seconds generation time of the category page. And if you have, let's say, hundreds of customers, like for 16 seconds, it means like one of FPM processes is always busy. And if you have hundreds of customers uh, browsing the website, uh, there is, you have to have tons of resources. Like, and hundreds of customers, it's nothing, right? It's, it's even not buyers, it's just, people who just browsing the website so you, you have to have really a huge farm of 
uh, FPM nodes to, to support this this kind of uh, generation times because like 16 seconds it's like one or two seconds it's okay it's not perfect from point of view of performance like you can achieve yeah 400 milliseconds if you really invest into performance of your store um, to generate a category page but like just by fixing obvious performance issues you can achieve like uh, two three seconds generation time on category pages uh, two seconds generation time on product pages this is reasonable you can work with it but 16 seconds 10 seconds this is too much and no. it, 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 it just no. gonna uh, not scale at all in production uh, like yeah you have all the caches enabled but caches won't save you from uh, this kind of an issue yeah so maybe we'll come out with an optimization service to help agencies and developers and even end merchants if they want augment their their devops into the performance stuff uh as, as soon as i finish with my current uh, uh <laughs> overload of the work because i have too much customers right now and uh, yeah it's it's quite tough to manage it all uh in timely manner uh but as soon as i uh get finished with that one i plan to restart my uh training course uh so i have a performance training course i think the ones that uh, your uh guys from and girls from mage mojo uh were attending yeah. uh last september when i was in new york Yep, uh, they really like that. Yeah, so this is basically what I'm planning to do, especially considering uh, all the situation right now in the world. It's going to be completely online course. Uh, I already ordered um, a Vacom tablet in order to be able to draw on it because uh, I usually mm. draw a lot of stuff uh, in training room on the whiteboard. But unfortunately, in online situation, like I don't have whiteboard at home. But in training room locations, there are usually always whiteboard or flipboard or whatever I can draw draw on because uh, I have a lot of exercises in training courses where we discuss specific uh, customer requirements and in which ways you can go wrong with implementing it, let's say, just with bare core functionality uh, by trying to not modify Magento at all. Uh, so I, I, I really think... Uh, just our community just need a little bit more uh, insight uh, into the way how to fix the issues like this show is good to show hey so th th those are the problems but uh, still uh, like we are not showing how to fix them first of all because there is not an enough time <laughs> in the show and uh, second of all yeah it's it, it just impossible to do it without uh, really explaining with real examples and the real code samples and so on all right yeah well thank you for blackfire for sponsoring we really appreciate it love the tools uh get at us on twitter load in the loop or email uh litl at magemojo.com um yeah add us if you want to get on the show we do put other people we will put other people who aren't customers here on the show uh but our customers get priority for sure so shout us out like subscribe follow pin us on pinterest <laughs> any final f final words um yes yeah, so thank you very much everyone who's still uh watching till this moment <laughs> so uh yeah Keep uh, safe and uh, we will overcome this current uh, crisis and everything going to be fine. So till the next uh, show.